And speaking of saving lives, Kid O'Shea, what are you working on? We are learning all about hands-only CPR this morning. If you don't know about it, you will by the end of the morning. But first, I have some people that want to say... Good morning, Washington! We'll be right back on ABC7. How much would you... 616 now, and this morning, Kid O'Shea is out on the town. And today, he is at Arlington County Fire Station 5, looking at how to save lives and kids learning all about hands-on CPR. Yeah, hands-only CPR. Maybe you haven't heard about it, but we're going to learn about it this morning from Taryn and Eric, who are with the Virginia Hospital Center. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for having me. So I did not know anything about hands-only CPR until we got here, and this is an initiative in Arlington right now to get more and more people to learn about it. So tell us about it. It's teamed up with EMS from Arlington County, and we're trying to get the community out to learn more about how to do hands-only CPR, which is an American Heart Association initiative. And the benefits of hands-only CPR versus the old way, which is breathe in their mouth, pump a little bit, breathe. What's the difference? So American Heart wanted to get bystanders involved as quickly as possible because that improves the outcome of the patient. So taking away the mouth to mouth didn't prove any different than just doing the hands only compression. All right, so we have two dummies here this morning. How, how do we do it? You can teach us this right now. All right, so this is Eric. He's one of our ER technicians. We want you to put your hands over top of each other, okay. interlace the fingers, and go on the center of the chest. And we want you to push hard and fast, hitting about 100 to 120 compressions per minute. So, so as long as you're doing this and you've got 911 on the, on the way, right. that is what you want to do if you see someone suddenly collapse. So the first thing to do is call 911, put your phone on speakerphone so that you can tell them what's going on. Then how, how do you know when you are supposed to stop doing this? So if you get tired and there's someone else, you guys would want to switch. But you want to do the compressions until help arrives or if the patient were to wake up. Okay. Um, sometimes it will look as if somebody, a patient is still breathing and people don't give them CPR. That's not always the best sign. If they're laying there and they're not responding to you, their brain may still be have oxygen, but they, their heart may not be Absolutely. moving. Absolutely. If they are not responding to you and it looks like that you know, they're down, go ahead and start CPR. All right. A broken rib from CPR is way better than a broken heart. And we're going to talk about that a little bit coming up after 6.30, the fear of hurting someone when you're giving them CPR and the wrong ways and the right ways to do it. That's all coming up as we continue here at the Arlington Fire Department. We'll send it back to you guys. All right. Thank you, kid. Great information. 618 here in New